by Rampage Jackson. And that's it. That is all she wrote for her deeds right there. You Danielle the Taylor fight. throwing he some heavy shots and ends the fight. Cutler is out. Insane airplane toss by Charles Crazy. You had to take that. Huge knees. Two huge knees. Two. And there she is, Ronda Rousey making her pro debut in excellent fashion. Jamie Colleen just destroying Cutler says no more, I'm out. And a quick look at our rules of combat based on three five-minute rounds and, of course, five five-minute rounds for championship bouts. And, of course, in the amateur division, that changed to three three-minute rounds and, of course, five three-minute rounds for championship bouts in the amateur division. It's based on the 10-point must system, judging criteria, and to get things started, we'll go ahead and throw it to the cage. Ladies and gentlemen, from Toyota Arena, Ontario, California, King of the Cage and General Tire present this three-round bout in the Bantamweight Division. After the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, James Beers. Introducing first, fighting out of our Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing five feet five inches tall, Official weight, 144.6 pounds. He represents De La O Jiu-Jitsu. Ladies and gentlemen from Garden Grove, California, presenting Anthony Renteria. His opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire red corner, stands at five feet, seven inches tall. Official weight, 145 pounds. He represents Chino Combined Martial Science. Ladies and gentlemen, from Chino, California, presenting Gabriel de Santiago. Once again, James Beers is your official for this bout. Now with the final instructions, three rounds, phantom weights. Here we are, round number one, our first bout of the evening. Anthony Renteria versus Gabriel De Santiago. And they're off. Santiago staring him down. Renteria sticking to the outside of the inner circle. Fighters clinching up here. Yeah, so that way we move a little faster. We want to get the you know, position right there because I mean, both sides right now full of energy, moving back and forth good. You can't just come in and you know, touch someone there and say, okay, I'm gonna get this takedown. You gotta set it up somehow. Both fighters kind of running into a stalemate here. Oh, and just as I say that, Renteria gets that takedown. That's a nice little power lift right there. Yeah, right back to the cage. Use that cage to get up nicely. Takes nice the knee. knee. Nice sweep right there by Renteria. Gets on top of that right away. Starts with the damage. That's what you want. Why don't we take some down? Start delivering some blows. Soften them up, change the course of everything. Pass, 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 
Renteria making things very uncomfortable for Santiago. I thought he was throwing a few little shots there too, you know. Because all he's doing is just letting Renteria do whatever he wants because he has no, no consequence. Hey, now to move here, I can move there. You're not doing nothing. You're exactly. just covering up. And this could be it right here. Get some good shots. He's got full mount. Good Renteria. position. Exactly, just pounding away. Santiago struggling to defend here. And all you got to do is get a few of those in there. Lock them up a little bit. And that's not a good sign by Santiago right there. You know, he's just covering up, not really doing anything. He's got to try to buck, try to shrimp out of there, yeah, do whatever he, he can. He's but got to strike back something. I mean, ref only lets this go on for so long. Renteria just can, and that's it. The referee says that's enough. Yep. And, you know, 30 seconds left. But yeah. then again, Where he was, was down there go? for 30 exactly. seconds, you know, yeah. being pounded on. Exactly. You know, that's, that's the rest job right there. Make sure, hey, you can defend yourself. If you can't defend yourself, that's what's going to happen. It's the fight's going to get stopped. And that's all it takes right there. Look at him. He's delivering shots. He should have, you know, grabbed his waist. Ladies and gentlemen, referee in charge, James Beers, has seen enough. Steps in, calls a halt to this bout due to strikes. The official time, two minutes and 29 seconds of round number one. Your winner by TKO, Anthony Renteria. Here is Sean Shara. Sean Sharaf now making his way to the cage side. Sharaf hails from Santa Ana, California and stands at six feet two inches tall. Sharaf is coming to the cage with a fresh amateur record looking to pick up his first win here tonight against the likes of Ryan Casares. Sharaf trains out of Costa Mesa, California. There he practices what he considers a freestyle technique uh, Sharaf is very much a stand-up fighter. This more than likely is not going to get taken down to the ground. I think Sharaf is going to be throwing bombs. He's going to be looking for that knockout. You know, it's going to be the quickest way to end this fight. I think that's exactly what he's trying to do. He wants that first win. He wants to look good. It's his first impression in an amateur MMA battle here at King of the Cage. Uh, I think he definitely stands to have a real chance. Sean Sharaf heads inside the cage. Ryan Casares now making his way to the cage side. Casares hails from Anthem, Arizona and stands at 5 feet 11 inches tall. He's currently fighting at the 266 pound weight class. His amateur MMA record also stands at zero wins. He's looking to pick up his first win here tonight. Both these fighters coming out. It's their first fight of the night. It's going to be very ambitious. Um, amateurs are always bringing their A game to the table because for one, you know, they're obviously just trying to leave a good impression so that they can eventually get into the pro leagues. Uh, both of these fighters, great stand-up fighters. They got great hands. They're more than likely going to just be slugging it out. And honestly, it might just come down to who gets that lucky punch. Casares trains out of Infinite Anthem in Arizona. He's got a mixture of some wrestling and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu added to his style. However, like I was saying before, he is a brawler. He's going to probably want to stay on the stand-up. But if things get taken down to the ground, he's very much going to be able to handle himself. Ryan Casares heads inside the cage. Ladies and gentlemen, from Toyota Arena, Ontario, California, King of the Cage and General Tire present this three-round bout in the heavyweight division. 
After the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Mylan Ayers. Introducing first, fighting out of our Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing six feet two inches tall, official weight 230.4 pounds. He represents RVCA Costa Mesa. Ladies and gentlemen, from Santa Ana, California, presenting Sean Sherrod. Here's a point across the cage, fighting out of our general tire in red corner, stands at 5 feet 11 inches tall. Official weight, 238.4 pounds. He represents Infinite MMA. Ladies and gentlemen, from Anthem, Arizona, presenting Ryan Tank Kajare. Once again, Mylan Ayers is your official for this bout. Now with the final instructions, three rounds, heavyweights. All right, Ryan, Sean, we've thoroughly covered the rules. Protect yourselves at all times. Follow my instructions at all times. If you want to touch the gloves, do it now. All right, return to your corner. Here we are, round number one. Sean Chirac versus Ryan Casares. And we'll get things started. This bout is set for the heavyweight division. Three rounds and three minutes apiece. We got a lot of power back behind these punches. Probably you can tell there's no love lost here. Yeah, they're just going straight in, looking for that knockout. Both of these guys got plenty of knockout power. We'll just see who gets there first. Oh! Ooh, big hit from Sharaf. Kazara is trying to stick in there and defending. He's throwing some strikes of his own. Rob better be careful. I mean, he looks a little too cocky, right? Not confident, just cocky. And he throws one shot, he stands there and looks at him. Threw a nice knee, just stood there and looked at him instead of, you know, following it up. I mean, he might have that knockout power, but, man, if he gets caught with a few shots himself. And on the counter, and uh, Kazara is looking just a little sloppy as far as, like, his striking. He's just trying to jump right in there and throw. Not really hitting with the most accuracy. Sharaf closing in. Sharaf moving in. Kazara's with some nice body shots. Hey, with that head moving right a little bit, Kazara does. He's just standing to your jabs straight to the face. More shots. Kazara is just taking it. I mean, the guy's got an iron chin. I'll give him that. Now, Sharaf taking some damage, too, but I think, you know, he's just dealing more of it. Well, more precise shots. Exactly, yeah. Of course, you know, because uh, Kazara, like I said, he just stands there, takes a shot, boom, 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 and, and then he just kind of throws a flurry and just yeah. kind of blindly throws some fists, hoping he hits something. And, you know, it's kind of working for him a little bit, but he's going to have to be a little more accurate, I think, if he wants that knockout. Sharaf oh. closing in with some more heavy strikes. Kazara is trying to hang in there. There it is. Is that drive forward, coming to throw some shots of his own. Oh, he's coming in a little too reckless. You know, I mean, he comes in, throws the shots, but he's just, like you said, throwing wild, not enough precise. And he's tying himself out a lot, too, with all those shots he's throwing. Exactly. He's just trying to counter that aggression by just cranking up his aggression a little more. But it's got to just be honed in a little bit more on that opponent. Sharaf, you know, he's taking his time a little more. He's watching and picking his shots. That's why he's are landing a lot more significantly. Yeah, the, the shots he throws, he's not wasting all this extra energy and he's making them count. And that's it for round number one. I mean, wow, that was a lot of hits getting thrown back and forth, a lot of it power was. being exchanged. I'm surprised Casares is still just as okay as he is. 
I mean, he took quite a few shots. Yeah, he was able to return a few to Sharaf, but nothing as significant. Now, well, Sharaf, you know, he moves with those shots when Kassar, uh, you know, Kassar comes in. Here we are, round number two. Like we came up before, a very exciting first round. Lots of damage getting dealt back and forth. And it looks like they're right back into it. Well, Sharaf again doesn't want to touch gloves. He's coming in strictly business, just wants to get one thing done, and oh. that's it, right there. That's why he didn't want to touch gloves. Oh, no, my face in your glove, my glove no. in your face. He's like, don't worry, we'll touch gloves <laughs> later. <laughs> wow, amazing win right there, huge knockout. I mean, can't say it wasn't expected from the first round. At least one of these guys was going to get knocked out at some point, but there it was. Take a look at this replay here. Both fighters came in. And they were swinging, you know, it wasn't just one way. I mean, they were both swinging, but so far was just connecting a little bit more. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time, 15 seconds of round number two. Your winner by knockout, Sean Shara. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from Toyota Arena, Ontario, California, King of the Kings and General Tire present this three-round bout in the Bantamweight Division. After the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Mylon Ayres. Introducing first, fighting out of our Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing five feet nine inches tall, official weight 145.5. Six pounds. He represents level MMA. Ladies and gentlemen, from Corona, California, presenting Arnold Joao Jimenez. His opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire, red corner stands at five feet five inches tall. Official weight, 145.4 pounds. He represents the Vegas Tribe and Carlson Gracie. Ladies and gentlemen, from Las Vegas, Nevada, presenting the Rod, the Messenger, Once again, Mylon Ayers is your official for this bout now with the final instructions. Three rounds, Bantam Waits. All right, guys, we thoroughly covered the rules. Protect yourselves at all times. Make sure you follow my directions. If you want to touch gloves, do it now. Turn, turn to your corner. All right, here we are, round number one. Farb Muhammad versus Arnold Jimenez. Jimenez in the blue corner, Muhammad in the red. Once again, this fight taking place in the 145 pound division. Three rounds at five minutes apiece. Both these guys, great stand-up fighters. Fard Muhammad's got a lot of power packing behind his punches and some great ground game, but Jimenez, very quick, very agile, also has a really good ground game, too. That's what it looks like right here. None of these guys want to take the initiative and assist them. I don't want to get hit first. Fard moves in, throws a kick. Now things quickly getting taken down to the ground. Oh. Fard throwing oh, just some heavy strikes. Shot. I mean, you can see the power behind that. He's, he's trying to knock him out. Picks him up, gets the slam. That's Muhammad, unrelenting. All over the place, too. I mean, any position, whatever position it is, he's going for it. Exactly. This is the thing about Muhammad, always bringing that ferocity, a lot of explosiveness to the table in every fight he's in. We'll see if Jimenez can keep up. Didn't quite have that rear naked choke set in. Let's 
See, this is the slowest I've seen Muhammad right now moving. <laughs> moving so. Probably spent a lot of energy right there. Jimenez now probably just trying to lock him up, stop that mobility. Oh, no, he's back at it. Look at that. Muhammad just continues to break forward with just sheer power. And Muhammad took a, you know, a few second rest right there and said, no, 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 let's go, let's go. You're not going to, you know, get me any submissions or put me in your position you want. And he bet he's got to get out of his position here. You know, he's got to, you know, go for that submission or just get out of here. Muhammad with another quick little slam there, trying to shake him in his loose. I tell you, he may have done a good job of tying Muhammad up right there. I mean, if he wants to get up, keep him right here. Ref will stand him right up. So like Muhammad trying to get him up against the cage, limit his movement, but Jimenez, Jimenez now right getting the back. Got to watch that neck, though. Put his head down with that takedown. Muhammad's cranking it. Put himself right in a bad position, but he get his head out of there. But, man, we got, he got, he got a minute, 50 seconds to work it. There it is. Then it's going to work right away, you know. Got a little shot to the ribs. Trying to get an elbow in there. That's the only difference between that between, you know, Mohamed and Jimenez. When Mohamed was on top, he was just hanging on, or I don't know if Jimenez was doing a good job of tying him up, but he couldn't get those shots off him. Jimenez taking full advantage right now. Yeah, Jimenez doing a great job turning things around here. Now Muhammad trying to turn things around, ending up on top. That lack of pressure by Jimenez, you know, just give him a little too much room right there. Didn't have his weight on him. Muhammad felt that right away and said, hey, you know what? I can push you right over. And that's all he did, just pushed him over. Got back in, you know, on top. And in a better position than being on his back. Muhammad continuing to keep that pressure, keeping that weight, and they're going to split him up. Now they're going to get stood up here. Referee calling for more work. I say he meant it was doing work all the way through, but it was just, I think it was that, that Muhammad on top and just slaying on him a little bit. Ref noticed that, said, you know what, let me get you guys up. I'm sure that's no issue for Muhammad. He seemed to do fine in the stand up, and now they're getting back down to the ground. Now in a dangerous position, but saved by the bell. They're like uh, Jimenez is there, you know, working a leg, lock, chump, chump a little leg. Exactly, both of them are about to get really tied up there for a second. Had that bell not rung. Uh, Muhammad coming off very strong in the beginning of the round, dealing a lot of damage, really striking with a lot of power. But uh, once things got taken down to the ground, Jimenez was able to turn things around a little bit in his own favor. Yeah, I know, yeah. Muhammad's got to be careful if he gets on top because he's, he's, he's working. Whereas, you know, Muhammad on top, he's just holding him, you know, trying to figure stuff out. Welcome back, round number two, Arnold Jimenez versus Fard Muhammad. Muhammad coming off of a great start in the beginning of that first round, but Jimenez turning things around towards the end. Now they're going to get a fresh start. Looking to deal some oh. damage again, but Jimenez gets the nice takedown. He has he a bad habit of putting his head down right there and putting himself in a guillotine every single time. Exactly. Muhammad now locking him down, making it very uncomfortable. I mean, if Muhammad stretches his legs out, you know, I mean, he could, he could put it away right there. It looks like the position is in the right, he's, he's in the right position for it to be executed. He's just got to straight, straight that body out. 
Well, I say it was quick for, for Jimenez, you know, to go down for that takedown just to put his head in the wrong spot. But like I said, if he gets his head out, it's not good for Muhammad because from on top, Jimenez can deliver some good damage, and he's quick about it, too. He's not wasting time waiting for this, for that. He makes it happen. Exactly. Jimenez now putting down the pressure. Muhammad on his back. So he took Muhammad over to get those nice clean rib shots right there. Muhammad trying to come back with some elbows. Jimenez raising elevation. Jimenez now trying to possibly set up this guillotine, maybe. Turning things yeah. around. Maybe setting up a choke. Mohamed setting himself up. And Mohamed ends up on top. Good explosion by Mohamed right there to get Jimenez off. Yeah. And now they see, you know, Mohamed's on top again. Let's see him do something, you know. Exactly. Got to put a little there. more. Or the ref might stand things up again, or they'll stand it up themselves. Jimenez. Ooh. Oh. Mohamed grabbing onto that arm. Jimenez lining up in side mount. Throwing some knees to the body. Muhammad turning things around. Yeah, this is a scramble all the way through. You know, I'm thinking Jimenez got it. No, Muhammad's got it. I just can't figure out who's going to get what just right now. Yeah, it's really going back and forth here. It looks like we lost the mouthpiece for a second there. Oh, now Jimenez locking up the leg. You got to be careful. Mohammed letting all the, those outside the cage know that he's okay. Throwing those elbows down to the knee. That's got to hurt. Ooh, nice backhand. Back Just working that knee. I mean, that's a good strategy by Mohammed right there because, I mean, that, that will start irritating after a while, just like any other shot to anywhere. Yeah, if you're not feeling it now, you're definitely going to be feeling it in the morning. <laughs> Jimenez still not giving up on that leg, though. Jimenez doing a good job. Got that knee out of harm's way now. Mohamed signaling that he's good. Mohamed just in a very awkward position. He's just trying to figure out anywhere he can throw some strikes. Going after the feet now. Not a whole lot of places Muhammad actually has to target at the moment. It's always an awkward position to get into. Yeah, you gotta realize right here, both fighters have the same opportunity to do the same submission to each other, just who can execute it right. And right here we see Muhammad going for a little bit of ankle, slips out. And we all know how devastating an ankle injury could be, so really just going to come down to who sets that in perfectly first. Yeah, and the worst part is you won't feel when your ankle snaps because I don't, for some reason you don't feel that. You just hear it crack and all of a sudden, oh, wait a minute, I can't walk now. We'll make it out of the round. And it looks like that's it for round number two. Pretty stalemate, and i got to say, for this round, yeah. both fighters going at it pretty evenly. Um, like you were saying before, it's just kind of back and forth, you know. Fard ends up on top, and then Jimenez ends up on top, and back and forth, and back and forth. It was. But I'll tell you right now, at the end of that round, when uh, Muhammad got up, he was limping a little. So, you know, he took a little wear and tear on that leg. Had to have been. I mean, he was cranking it. Definitely going to have to be feeling something. Still got a whole round left, though. Yeah, I know. These guys are doing a great job going back and forth. I mean, it was... You didn't know who had what, you know, who had the advantage because 
One's getting stricken out. The other one's working on a leg. It's just like, Could have gone any moment to anybody. We'll just have to see how it develops. Here we are, round number three. Welcome back from the break. Once again, Arnold Jimenez versus Farb Muhammad. The referee calling for Muhammad to go ahead and put his mouthpiece in. We got it lost a couple of times um, during the last fight. I think if Muhammad was spinning it out, I don't know if he was having trouble with it, you know, breathing. Yeah, maybe it's just uncomfortable, but no, referee's got to call that, got to make sure he has that in there. Yeah. A lot of times, too, you know, you got fighters that just get the regular mouthpieces in there so they can pop them off at will. You get the fitted ones, they go in, you don't even fill them in there, you know, because it's just the fitted to your teeth. Yeah. yeah, they just get stuck in there, and it's, it's great. You know, that's the mouth, how the mouthpiece that I have is you put it in, in between the rounds, I don't take it off because it's too hard to take it off. It's like, hey, leave it until the fight's over. Don't ever have to worry about, you know, watch me spit that mouthpiece out. Exactly. Muhammad takes a hit there. Oh, and now throws one to Jimenez. Kick from Jimenez. Muhammad shrugs it off. Oh, Muhammad's playing with that mouthpiece too much. If he gets caught right at the time he's, you know, he's playing with that, it okay. could be bad for him. Yeah. Jimenez going in for that takedown. He gets it. Scoops up the legs. I think that last round might have took a little bit out of uh, Muhammad there. Yeah, he's looking a little fatigued. Yeah. You know, he could try and use that fence to his advantage, try to get back up onto his feet. And Jimenez twisting him away from it. I think he's using this as a break, you know, recover a little bit, you know, get his wind back. That is what it's looking like. Muhammad trying to work his way to the side. Takes an elbow to the ribs. You gotta be careful right here, you know. Don't, don't put himself in a position where he can just get wailed on tonight, you know, defend himself. Yeah, if he's gonna lay, if Muhammad's gonna lay, he's gotta tie up, you know. Tie him up so that you can't do anything. You know, take no punishment. Refs just say, okay, you guys, you know, let's get up. But these little pats here are not working to his advantage. Jimenez doing a good job here, dropping those elbows on the head of Muhammad. Yeah, Jimenez. No, Jimenez having, having what he wants at will. You know, he takes shots to his ribs, shots to his head. He's got these perfect opportunities opening up for him. I mean, Mohammed locks him up, but only certain ways, and not, not the right ways to, you know, keep him from getting struck, you know, strikes being put on him. Like I was saying before, you know, Jimenez, I got to say, I think he's a much stronger ground game fighter than he is in the stand-up, and I think it just took him that one round to really learn uh, Mohammed's technique and to kind of work around that this whole round. Yeah, that first round, I mean, they were going left, right, everywhere. I mean, you know, back and forth. I mean, there was no stopping each one of them. You know, they were just going, going, going full of energy. Now you're right. seeing Jimenez taking a little bit more of that dominant role now, keeping that, he's really pushing the pace now. Muhammad just trying to hold on and reduce that damage and take. Yeah, it could have been Muhammad did a little too much in the you know, first two rounds where, you know, it wore him out a little too much and it wasn't, you know, aggressive enough in the sense of, uh, you know, damaging Jimenez. And here now Jimenez, you know, he's, he's slowly, you know, working up, putting pressure on him, throwing the hits, landing the hits. Wearing him out. Jimenez just continuing to pursue. Muhammad trying to push his way away from the cage. Jimenez bringing him right back. I just gotta say, Jimenez better watch his weight though, because he could get turned over here real easily, you know. He can have Muhammad's no to do that, you know, he's sitting there on his back and he just explodes, boom, yeah. throws you off, so. Yeah, that's the thing, Muhammad's got huge explosive strength, he's able to turn things around very quickly if he just finds that right opportunity. I think Jimenez is trying to be very careful, very methodical with this approach.
Just under 45 seconds left in this round. I tell you, even if Muhammad gets on top right here within these last seconds, when he gets to the top, he doesn't do enough. You know, he just lays there. So, I mean, it's... The only thing you got to do is, is put him away, I think. Jimenez looking for that submission. Fard Muhammad, though, always proves to be a very stubborn opponent. You know, he's not easy to put away. Last 10 seconds here, finishing up. And Jimenez tries to finish strong and on top. And that's it for this fight. It's gonna have to go to the judge's decision. First off, let's take a look at that replay. Uh, like we were saying, I think Jimenez definitely took this round in terms of control. Um, he was just, seemed to have more stamina, was just more in control of the whole process, whether it was on the ground game, you know, was able to get in all those positions a lot more ideally than Mohamed was. And Mohamed really wasn't showing too much defense this round. Yeah, no, no, he, Mohamed, you know, shut down more, more than 50% of what he was doing in the earlier rounds. This round, it was him just trying to, you know, hey, let me get to the end and, and not get tapped out, knocked out, and really punished. But yet, you know, Jimenez constantly throwing punches left and right. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of bantamweight action here in California's England Empire, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge at cage side, Chris Crail, scores this bout 28 to 27, while judges Mark Davidson and Jackie Denkin both score it 29 to 27. All three in favor of your winner by unanimous decision, Arnold Joao Jimenez. Yeah, I was originally supposed to fight Draco Rodriguez, but uh, there's some issues within his camp that he was not able to make this fight. So I am now fighting a new opponent from Jackson Week. His name is Renson. I believe he's from Mongolia. Uh, you know, he's a tough competitor. So I'm just gonna go in there and then give him Given my A game, you know, you know, this has been the story of my career. I'm supposed to fight these guys. I end up fighting a new guy, so it's just, you know, I've always been prepared for all areas of combat, all styles of fighting. So this is going to be nothing new, and I'm going to show everybody why I'm the best in this business today. Yeah, you know, the last seven months, the bantamweight title picture has been real chaotic. You know, there's been a few different champions along the way, and for whatever reason, it's just been all over the place. But now it's time for for that title to have a proper owner. And you're looking at him right here, in Kid Kavimbo. Man, so every time I walk out, you know, I just feel the energy of the crowd. They're going wild, they're screaming. But honestly, the feeling is very void. Like, you enter this weird, like, like you're in this dark world. Like, you hear everything, but you're, you're just, it's just you in there. And, you know, the feeling's very void. So, like, when I'm out there, I'm just super laser focused. Everyone always asks me that question. I just go in there like with the blank feeling, like it's as if it's the end of the world or something. But, you know, it's, it's a great feeling. And then I feel I'm just laser focused once I step into that cage, ready to beat someone up. Renson, welcome to the Kid Kavimbo Show. Tonight, I'm gonna show you who El Mexi Americano is. I'm gonna be crowned the champion tonight. See you guys after. Here is Atuan Tulga, the Mongolian soldier Renson. Atan Toga Renson now making his way to the cage. Renson hails from Erdenet, Mongolia, and stands at five feet six inches tall. He's coming a long way to fight this fight, and what an opponent he's going up against the likes of Johnny Munoz Jr. It's going to be a great fight for both of these fighters. Um, of course, this was a uh, last-minute fill-in. Um, Renson was, came, you know, took up to the responsibility, came to the table, and decided that he was going to uh, pick up this fight against Munoz. Um, of course, the original opponent was supposed to be Draco Rodriguez, but there was discrepancies um, in the process of matchmaking. So now we have Renson 
Uh, Renson, a fantastic fighter from Mongolia. He's fighting out of the 136 pound weight class. His pro MMA record stands at four wins and one loss. He's looking to pick up that fifth win here tonight against Johnny Munoz. Now for the meantime, Renson trained out of Jackson Wink, Albuquerque in New Mexico. He considers himself a very well-rounded fighter, and that he is. Um, he's got a great stand-up technique. He's got great ground game. He, that's pretty much the best way to describe it. He's just about as well-rounded as he gets. Um, he's very fast, very light on his feet, very agile. He's going to be a very tough opponent to get around as Renson heads inside the cage. Johnny Munoz Jr. now making his way to the cage side. Munoz hails from Norco, California and stands at 5 feet 9 inches tall. He's currently fighting out of the 135 pound weight class. His pro MMA record stands at 8 wins, 0 losses. He's looking to pick up his ninth win here tonight and uphold that undefeated record. Of course, we've seen Munoz and the likes of his gym here with through plenty of fighters, even just here tonight, uh, as well as all over the United States. Uh, Munoz is a fantastic fighter, probably one of the best fighters we have in our 135 pound division. Um, he's very well rounded, he's got fantastic jiu-jitsu coming from that sequence gym. Um, he's got good stand-up. Of course, this is going to be a very, very even match for him. It's going to be a great match against the likes of Renson. Um, I think their two very well rounded opponents have pretty equal stats. Um, it's going to be a very interesting fight. Obviously, Munoz uh, taking a little bit of that height advantage and the reach advantage. So that's definitely going to come in handy. Now, Munoz is currently a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So, you know, if we're going to talk about just what he's bringing to the table in terms of ground game, uh, that kind of speaks for itself. Black belt Jiu-Jitsu from sequence Jiu-Jitsu. Um, he's really going to be a tough opponent to handle on the ground. Really going to prove to be very uh, troublesome for Renson if he wants to take things down to the ground. Now, Munoz has been fighting here at King of the Cage for quite some time. He's always putting on a great fight. Uh, you can see he's brought a huge fan base here to this event. Once again, we're here at the Toyota Arena in Ontario, California. This is King of the Cage Golden Era. Our main event of the night is just about to get started for the King of the Cage Flyweight World Championship. Retson versus Munoz. We see his coach there, Johnny Munoz Sr. Longtime affiliate with King of the Cage. Always bringing the best fighters to the cage, the best jiu-jitsu. Johnny Munoz Jr. heads inside the cage. by the California State Athletic Commission, Commissioner John Carvelli, Chair, Executive Officer, and the Foster Event Representative at Supervisor at Ringside. This evening is Sean Wells. It's in conjunction with Committee Cage Incorporated, President and Founder, Terry Trevilcock, Jr., Matchmaker Carlos Rivera, Promoter Jeff Mahalik. Timekeeper at the bell, Mike North. The three judges scoring this match will be Chris Crail, Mark Davidson, and Jackie Denkin. After the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Frank Tree. And now, for the thousands in attendance and the millions joining us around the world. 
Southern California. Let's hear it. This is our main event of the evening. Five rounds of MMA for the vacant King in the Cage Flyweight Championship of the World. Introducing first. Fighting out of our Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing five feet six inches tall. Official weight, 134.6 pounds. This Jackson Wink fighter has a professional record of four victories with one defeat. Ladies and gentlemen, from Erdemet, Mongolia, presenting Aktuan Tulga, the Mongolian soldier, his opponent across the cage fighting out of our general tire red corner stands at five feet nine inches tall official weight 135.8 pounds this sequence mma fighter has a perfect professional record eight bouts Eight victories, no defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, from Norco, California, presenting the undefeated Johnny K. Calimbo, Munoz Jr. Once again, Frank Trigg is your official for this bout. Now with the final instruction, five rounds, flyweights. All right, John, we got the instructions in the locker room. Be with the men's at all times. Prepare yourself at all times. We're going to touch gloves now. Come back out to your corners. Come out swinging. Here we are, round number one. This is our main event of the night. Renson versus Munoz. Munoz in the red gloves, Renson in the blue. And they're getting started. And now, of course, uh, Renson came in as a last-minute replacement. Uh, as we know, Johnny Munoz Jr. was supposed to fight Draco Rodriguez tonight, uh, but there were some discrepancies that went down, and now we have uh, Renson here coming in and filling in. Mongolian fighter. Normally fights out of the 125-pound division, so actually stepping up into a higher weight class to fight here tonight. And a very tough opponent at that, Johnny Munoz. You got to be careful, too, because, you know, you got you a fill-in fighter. You might not know much about him, you know, depending on how much time it was, you know, known about him coming in. And then you, if you underestimate, you're thinking, hey, he's a 125 or you know, I'm bigger, heavier, all this stuff. You you might underestimate him, and he might take advantage of that. Might surprise you with something. So you can't ever just say just because, hey, he's a last-minute fighter or feeling, you know, you don't have to take him lightly. Yeah, honestly, it's always 50-50 when it comes to those last-minute replacements. You never know if you're going to get... Uh, just a hidden all-star you've never heard of before that may end up knocking you out. You don't even know the guy. Exactly. Or you could get someone who maybe was just a filler, you know? Yeah. But as it seems so far right now, Renson holding up against the likes of Munoz fairly well, defending well. As we all know, that sequence uh, jiu-jitsu is going to be uh, the main weapon of Johnny Munoz. Also moves over to side control pretty nice and easy. Munoz swoops in, takes the back. It's a nice little roll there. He's trying to get those hooks in. Renson doing a good job of defending. Yeah, he's not having it. He's like, no, 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 we're going out here. Like, and that's we... the thing you don't, you know, a lot of times you don't see with people. People get locked up and they have a tendency to just freeze up and try to just stiff up, you know, and, and withstand it. But Renson's just wiggling, squirming, doing everything yeah. he needs to do to create that space. Yeah, they, I mean, it gives credit to, to Renson in the sense of, hey, he, he's got some jiu-jitsu background. He knows how to, you know, defend, execute, move, move out of certain positions. Munoz once again going for that takedown. Renson defending. You gotta inflict a little bit of damage here too to soften them up, you know. Yeah, Red not, not them just up. for the takedown, but just to score the points too, you know, wear them out a little bit more. Right. 
I think, I think uh, the first round, they're both pretty fresh here. Lightweight, they got a lot of energy. Oh, yeah, They definitely. got a lot of movement. And these guys are ready to burn five rounds if they have to. Oh, yeah. So you got to make sure, hey, the hits always wear someone out a little bit. A little bit more, so it gives you a little advantage. Because look at this, he, you know, Munoz trying to take him down. He's got enough energy, enough, you know, wits bound to, hey, let me pop back up, let me defend this takedown. Ransom doing a good job fighting off those hands and that wrist. I mean, when you're looking at two, you know, pro wrestlers you're trying to take each other down, I mean, it's it's not easy. You know, it's the same thing here in MMA. You try to take someone down that's fresh. They know how to defend the jiu-jitsu, the takedown. And you ain't going to take it down unless you do a little extra. And that's what the punching and kicking's for. The knees, elbows, all that. Especially when you're up against the cage. Yeah, you're exactly right. Renson coming back here now. Throwing some kicks, bringing up the heat. Munoz back up against the cage now. Good move by Rinson right there, you know, with the strikes and in and out, in and out, you know, he definitely, you know, he's a little bit of a reach. Advantage difference serve from Munoz, you don't call it. And you see a little bit more of that, uh, that speed advantage coming from Renson, you know, probably as a result of that, you know, less than 10, that 10 pound kind of difference that he's got going on there. Um, he's got a little bit more speed, a little bit more agility. Yeah, and maybe it's something that Munoz is not used to, you know, so a little faster, a little quicker. And he's got to realize, hey, you know what, I got to wear him out. I can't just, you know, come in and take him down, power him down like I do because He's going to have that spunk to it as you go down to pop right back up as you're going down. Exactly, very springy. Not going to let, there we go, Renson throwing down some shots. Munoz once again trying to get this takedown. There you go, he's got him up, he's got him down. And what do you have, you know, how long will he keep him down? Not going to hold him down there for very long, only about 10 seconds left. And this is doing a good job too, you know, from the bottom. He's trying to drop his elbows and stuff. You know, obviously got him in Munoz's head right there. Munoz holding his head like, hey man, that hurt. Man, it looked like it just came down to the last second there. Both fighters doing a great job so far. I mean, both are just extremely persistent. These are two fighters, like we were saying before, they got great cardio. They're gonna be going the distance if they need to be, you know, and it doesn't look like they're particularly going for the knockout. You know, it definitely seems like it's going to be a ground game for the most part. Um, we're just gonna have to see how it develops though. Yeah, Renson doing a good job of defending. But Munoz is just constant. You know, if, if something doesn't work for him, he's going to immediately move into another position and try that. If that's not working, he's going to switch it up again. Coming up next, we have round number two. Stay tuned. Round number two. Welcome back. Once again, we have Renson versus Munoz. This is for the King of the Cage Flyweight World Championship. So a lot is on the line. Once again, we're here at the Toyota Arena in Ontario, California. King of the Cage would like to thank our sponsors, Lucas Oil and General Tire, for helping putting on this event. As well as Tapatio Meat Snacks. Munoz going in for that takedown once again. Renson up against the cage. Every time he comes in fight, I mean, he gets it nice and deep. And then it's just a matter of time before he ends up getting, you know, rinsed on his back. Right. Rinsing now being smart, putting that back up against that corner mat. Rinsing throwing some gut shots there to the ribs. Staying busy. Both fighters just trying to soften each other up, doing little bits of damage here and there. It's going to be a very technical, very methodic fight. It looks like Munoz was trying to you know, work those hips, you know, his legs and uh, hips down so he could uh, 
pulled, pulled uh, Kai Reed, Reed sitting back on his back. Right there, she just lays up, gets him low on the back, pulls him down, gets him off that cage, makes it easier for him to do stuff. Renson making sure to try to keep that elevation up just a bit. All right, he's not making it easy at all for Junior to he, He's making it work for everything. Look at that. Yeah, this fight proving to be a fantastic test for Johnny Munoz, who's known for his ground game. This is probably one of the toughest opponents he's gone against that I've seen him fight. In terms of just the defense of the ground game, it looks like he's setting in a rear naked choke here. And the part is he jumped again a little bit, you know, went for it, but the rest of his body was in position. Energy levels on both these fighters just relentless. And it looks like we'll take a break here. A low groin shot. You know, I mean, it happens. You, know, you can't. You can't take nothing away from any of the fighters right here. You know, it's accidental. They're moving, and the strike just happened to happen. Can't just say, oh man, you know, sometimes you see it when it's done on purpose and you're like, oh man, what the hell, I gotta need a break. In this case, none of these guys need a break or nothing like that. It just happened. All right, it looks like we're gonna get things resumed. And we're back up. Vincent's gotta avoid that takedown, you know. When the Rangers comes in, he's coming in quick. And I mean, he's going for one thing, is that takedown, so Vincent's just gotta pay attention to that. Yeah, if he can work to try and counter that, you know, this could start turning into his favor. Right now, I gotta say, it's. Pretty much still a stalemate. I mean, nothing too significant on either one. Um, Munoz definitely has been the aggressor and has been the one, you know, kind of taking the pace in this fight. But we'll have to see how it develops. We've got 45 seconds left in this round. Both fighters on their feet. I know Renson wants to stay on his feet. Munoz putting the pressure up against the cage once again. I'll tell you, see, that's exactly what Rinson needs to do right there. Munoz comes up for two. Hey, push him off, get, get that distance, and keep that pressure going. Just move around, stick and move, stick and move. And then, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll let Munoz know, hey, you know what, you can't come in that easy for that takedown, and you're going to pay for it every time you come in. And all of a sudden, that, that takedown slowly starts to go away. Munoz going for that single leg. Just about gets it. That was a sloppy single leg, but it was Rinson's movement that caused Munoz to be able to take him down so easily. You know, he tripped himself over. Right. Munoz now trying to take the back. Doesn't quite have it. Let's see right here. Munoz should be delivering some strikes. He's got them all locked up. Hey, let me give him some blows. That's what set up some submissions. You know, hey, distract him. Make him think something else and then put in what you want. Now locking down this guillotine, possibly. There we go, landing some, throwing some strikes. Trying to stay busy. Nice elbow from Munoz. And there we go, shoving down Renson. Renson slipping out the back. And that's it for round number two. Again, very action-packed round. Both fighters just not stopping. Relentless ground game, basically. And Munoz, once again, just going for takedown after takedown. Renson just have to work on that defense, trying to stop that. I'll tell you, Renson did a lot better right here, you know, with the stand-up part, you know, and, and defending the takedown, too. You know, able to push him off a couple times and just keep 
Still so living blows, you know, sticking moves, sticking moves. doing a great job up until the end. So, you know, Munoz ended up getting it down. But even in here, Munoz did a little better, too, in the sense of where he started, you know, doing a little more ground and pound, opposed to just holding him, trying to get that submission, lock something in. Right. Now, he could definitely be doing some more damage. But we'll just have to see how it keeps playing out. Catch round number three coming up after the commercial break. Welcome back, round number three. Renson versus Munoz. Now we're in the third round. By the end of this, we'll have been 15 minutes into the fight. Now it's really gonna start doing that test of fatigue, you know, starting to get a lot more sweat on them. It's becoming a, you know, getting into that late game of the fight. Yeah, and we gotta see right here, you know, if, if Munoz obviously did some, you know, good talking in the corner, but hey, you know what, put some strikes on him while you're standing, don't just sit there and wait for the takedown. Doing a good job. Let's see if Renson's corner did the same thing in the sense of, hey, trying to avoid that takedown. Renson throwing some body shots there, repeat after repeat. And Renson seems to have no issue wanting to stand and bang, though. That's the thing. You know, he's, if anything, he's, he's wanting to keep on that stand-up. So Munoz is throwing out. You know, it may just get Renson right back in that mood. Yeah, I know. No, the stand-up, you know, works in Renson's favor. You know, like I say, he's, he's got good stand-up, good movement. The ground game, although he's got good defense, good movement too, uh, Munoz has usually dominant position. And that, that's where it works against Renson's favor. So you just got to make sure, hey, if they go down, make sure you're on top. Like here, for example, hey, you're defending a takedown, but you're landing shots. That's what you want. You know, it might make, you know, might distract Munoz enough to where he lets go of that takedown and says, hey, okay, you know what, let's stand and bang instead. Munoz got to be careful here though, because enough of those shots could, you know, hey, swallow an eye shut, get a cut open, something where, hey, it distracts you as from your game plan and what you want to be doing. Exactly. Don't want to have to be running into any unnecessary situations that just make the fight harder than it already is. Renson defending. The ref might, yep, there it is. There's the separation. All right, they're gonna go right back into it. Renson messing around with his eye a little bit there. Looks like he may have gotten a little bit of a scrape. Some irritation. Just as we were talking about a second it could, ago. It, uh, could, it could be sweat, it could, you know, he, he could have, you know, got his own glove in or finger in his eye. You know, it's, you never know exactly what exactly what it was that caused it, you know. Right. Could have been a split second of something. Maybe an eyelash went in there. Who knows? But it wasn't enough to keep, keep you know, having to rub his face, his exactly. eyes. Exactly, you could see the irritation. And both their bodies just lighting up with little spots of red here and there from all those <laughs> little pats. Yep, from the knees of the our body blows everything. And now we got, you know, Rinson on top. Rinson nice. now looking to capitalize. Let's see if there's a difference with him on top. You know, what, what can he do from here? You know, he's got his head there. He's got him locked up. Man, do some shots, man. Get some shots. Get some damage. There we go. Munoz didn't want to let go of that. He wanted to stay on the ground. Retson said, no, let's stand up. That's a good, good call by Renson in the sense of where he's like, you know, I had, I was on top for a little bit, show some dominance. Now let's stand up and we show some more dominance, standing. Right. Keep that lead going. Whatever he can do, try to make himself look as strong as possible. Both these fighters still seem very much into it. They still got lots of energy. That sweat though is starting to build up. That's definitely going to become a big factor in the ground game. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, but that does make it harder for that sense. Munoz avoiding those strikes. You become too low because I mean you turn your back on someone, you, you're you're leaving your back open. You know, even you know you're not allowed to hit someone in the back. If he swings at the same time you turn or kick, and he kicks you in the back, hey, that's your own fault. 
You know, and yeah, it could really hurt you bad where, you know, you get the advantage. So you just got to be careful. Always keep your eye on your opponent. Renson continuing. He's being patient. You know, he's looking. He's picking his shots. He's trying not to overextend because he knows Munoz is going to be on it the second he does. Very tough fight for both these fighters. Coming down to the end of round number three now. I don't know. This, this round was, was good. It was close. You know, like I said it could have gone either way. You know, I pulled a little more toward Renson on that one. Got a little more control, more, more stand-up time. I mean, more, more damage to me was done by him. Opposed to me, I mean, it was close. Right. But that slight edge to me for Renson on that one. Oh, definitely, yeah. I think that definitely started to show a little spark and turn around in events. Um, I think Munoz did take those first two rounds just slightly for that control. He was just, like you were saying before, uh -huh. he was the one that was pushing the pace. He was dominating those positions on the ground. But yes, Ranson definitely bringing more to the table this round. And we still got two rounds left at yeah. most. So he's really got plenty of time to really change that game plan around and really make something happen. We only know stamina and fatigue is only going to be affecting these guys harder and harder every round. Yeah. And, you know, these are the next rounds where we see it now, too. Championship rounds. Round number four. Here we go. Another five minutes here. Referee Frank Trigg getting things started. Yeah, that's always funny how you, know, you got fighters, they do three rounds like nothing, they feel good, but then they go for a championship. But round number four, always you'll see a difference in a fighter. Hey, you know what? Were you ready for four or five rounds? Or were you just, you know, we you planning on ending it in three, three yeah. right? <laughs> Sometimes things always don't always go according to the plan, but you <laughs> always got to be prepared for that because yeah. that'll be the death of you. Yeah. Renson's still staying very active, pushing the pace as far as the stand-up goes. He's got some good head movement. Yeah, you guys, I mean, they're, they're, they're ready for round four easily. Oh, yeah. You know, there's no, guys, oh, my God, it's round four. What are we yeah, doing? You don't see it's any sluggishness. They're not slacking. I mean, if they're tired, they're definitely not showing it. No, not, not like anyone else in, you know, in a heavier weight. Division. No, exactly, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you get up to my weight in heavyweight, you know, four or five rounds, you, you start seeing the guys like, oh, man. What? Are we still here? Definitely. And knowing you, Tony, <laughs> like you're always going against the biggest dudes in the weight class whenever you have to go against. So you know that better than anybody. Yeah. We've seen you go on five rounds before. Yeah, and it's nice. definitely, I mean, 25 minutes doesn't necessarily seem like the most time, but 25 minutes in the cage, that could last like, that feels like an hour. <laughs> it's, it's a long time in there. Especially, you know, when you're going with someone that, you know, has got the same kind of cardio as you and it's pushing you, it's like, man, who's going to break first? Definitely going to be a great training experience for both of these fighters, though, regardless of who comes out as the winner. Definitely going to go down as something they could take it apart, you know, analyze this fight, really look at, you know, break down their moves and how they can become a better fighter moving on from this. I mean, probably a great test for both these fighters. Evenly matched, seemingly so. Um, definitely, i got to say, the strongest opponent that Munoz has faced so far. Yeah, I know, and like I say, it is, for either one, it's, it's not a, you know, walking apart here. They're earning their, their way to, to the championship. Everything comes with a price, you know. It's like, you know, you go for a takedown, hey, you're working all the way through. You might get a few elbows to the head, a few body shots to the, you know, ribs. But, you know, it's like, hey, how bad do you want it? Munoz now working his way on top, trying to control the situation. Swings over one leg in the half guard. That's a hard part here, trying to hold a small guy down and drop some bombs on him because those little guys, I mean, they got that, that spunk, they got the power, the energy to move. Good job by Munoz right now with these elbows. 
I don't know if that could be a little bit of fatigue sitting in right there. Uh, you know, he's keeping, you know, Rinsen right there. Or if he's just trying to figure out, okay, you know what, how am I going to get out of here? What am I going to do? Looking like a little bit of blood now starting to show. I believe from Rinsen. Or possibly from, uh, I believe, the mouth of Munoz. Good job. I'm going to go here posturing up a little, trying to get some shots in. Uh, change it up on the first two rounds where you just, you know, go for position and, and submission. And they're back up to their feet. Renson's still very light, bouncy. And this is where you can definitely, you can just see the comfort of Renson in the stand-up. He looks like he can go all day standing up as many rounds as he needs to. Still flowing with the energy. Munoz still looks like he's got enough energy too. Yeah, that's a bad thing for Munoz is he's like, man, you know what? Uh, I had this guy, got a little blood on him. I felt good to stand up trying to get some punishment on but it's, it's like, no, 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 you're good, let's go. Yeah, this guy's energy levels are just crazy. Definitely would prove to be a tough opponent for anybody. I mean, just first of all, having the stamina to last this long and still be, you know, that light on your feet, you're still jumping around, you're still flowing as much as you can. And that's it for round number four. And nothing but sportsmanship once the round finishes. We'll take a look at these replays really quick. Again, another round where debatably could have been a toss-up to either one. I mean, both guys are showing it. Munoz, like you were saying, was doing better, throwing some more strikes when he was on the ground. But as soon as it gets back up to that stand-up, Renson seems to dominate a little bit. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, you can't you can't take nothing away from either guy. You know, Munoz upped his game here in the sense for the ground game. You know, delivering some more strikes, opposed to just laying on and trying to get that submission. Whereas, like you know, hey, every time they popped up, here comes Renson back. He Munoz up with punches. You know. Left, right, everything, you know, it's, 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 it's a good thing I'm not a judge. Exactly. Well, we'll see the final round coming up. Here we are, fifth and final round. This is our main event of the evening. Once again, Renson versus Munoz for the King of the Cage Flyweight World Championship. And they're off. I was saying earlier, you, you can't ever take uh, an opponent that's a feeling lightly. You're talking championship rounds, five rounds, 25 minutes. Yes, and especially got, for a championship fight. It's like you, you know your, your fill-in has to be a certain level of good. Yeah, to have, and, yeah. and he's here. Look at him. He, he's going the fifth round, and he's still strong. He's not like dying, like, oh, yeah. my God, it's that. He was ready. He's ready for this fight. Exactly. No heavy breathing. You know, he's perfectly trained for this, even though his last minute, you know, just proved like he's just a career fighter. You know, yeah. he's always keeping his body in shape, always making sure that he's ready to go. Exactly. And that's where, you know, you got to think of from Munoz's point of view, hey, was he ready for this? I mean, you know, he was trained for a five-round fight, if possible, but were you ready for an opponent that was willing to go the distance like this and, you know, keep the pressure on, keep it going hard? Yeah. I think this is exactly what a fighter like Munoz needed, you know? He's un he's undefeated. He's fought several opponents that were, you know, nobody that I've seen that's been as tough as Redson. I think he needed this fight to really show him that, look, you still have lots of room to get better. And uh -huh. this fighter's going to show you. It's like where it's going to really push your pace. And you're really going to learn some stuff from this fight. And you're going to take it with you. Something that you're going to take into your next career, you know? Yeah, definitely. You can, you know, like you said, you, you, have, you always have to learn from every fight. And if every fight for you is, hey, you know what? It was over in two or, or three or one. You know, you don't feel like, ah, oh, there was nothing big, no big deal. You know, I got my guy, got all right, my Right, you fights. see less and less room for improvement. But something like this, you're getting pushed. You know, you can't finish the fight. It's really going to show you something. All right, what do I need to work on yeah, so that I don't have to go 25 minutes the next time? Precisely. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you know what? Hey, you know what? This guy did this to me. He did this to me. Man, why couldn't I finish him? What, what was I lacking? That is so true what you just said. Yeah, props to Renzi, you know, coming in last minute, taking a fight here with King of the Cajun. We got lots of tough fighters, and like I said, you know, 135ers, it doesn't really get as much tougher as Johnny Munoz. So, fantastic bout between these two fighters. The guys really going to be pushing each other.
Lanier is doing a good job right here, keeping his weight on Branson, making sure you know he keeps wearing him out little by little, and then he's doing one of those strikes. That's the most important thing right here. He was just not just laying there trying to get a submission. He's delivering strikes, scoring points, making it look good, entertaining for the fans, everybody to watch. Coming up to the last two minutes. Now's the time where everything's gonna get laid down on the table. And see if these guys opt to, you know, bring up the pace in these last couple of minutes here or they'll mellow out. Well, I'm hoping Rinson still has enough in him to get a final explosion to get back up to his feet and try and do something, you know. He's definitely trying. We can see right there, he's bucking. He's trying to get out of this. Munoz, though, just laying all that weight on top, locking him down. And now trying to set up a rear naked choke. Renson's not going to let that happen. Oh, arm bar possibly. A nice turn from Renson. That could have been it right there. Yeah, I know. Really nice. Like I said, he realized what was going on and he adjusted. Very quick thinking. And now, hey, back on the feet where I said, you know, Renson needed to be. He's got a minute to do, do good damage, a lot of damage. And, and look, hey. he's going in there. He's letting him have it. Munoz inviting him to come right back down to the ground because that's where he's going to want to hold it. This last minute here is really going to be important. You know, like we said before, it's been a pretty stalemate of a match. Can't really give any direct advantage to anybody. Like it really just comes down to, I think, the stand-up. Got to give it to Retson. Comes to the ground game, got to give it to Munoz. Yeah. Well, Retson heard you. He said, no, no, let's get this guy up. <laughs> Stop wasting time on the ground. Let's just get to it. Last 30 seconds here. If anyone's going to try and finish, it's going to happen now. And that's the other thing, too, you know, with these fighters, you don't, you're not necessarily seeing a lot of knockout power. You know, in these divisions, with these weight classes, they don't have all that, you know, power behind them. Not that we haven't seen it before, but when you're thinking of KOs or knockout fighters, these aren't necessarily the two guys that are first coming up to your mind. Yeah, no, no. I mean, these guys, multiple shots is what's going to end the fight. You can't just count on one big shot just to end it. You know, it's going to take multiple shots, and accumulation, and then boom, that's how you win. That's it. Five championship rounds. No fighter gave an inch either way. I mean, really, honestly, it's a toss-up for me. I can't really give this win to anybody here. Um, what a great performance from both of these fighters. You know, an immense, you know, just show of stamina. Both these guys look like they could go another three rounds if they needed oh, to. Oh, yeah, no, all the way to the end they were going at it. I mean, there was no slowing down. I mean, if they went down... They were down for as long as they could until to, to one popped up. They were back up on their feet, striking, and, you know, keeping it exciting for the people, the fans, everybody right to there. watch. Renson landing a couple of nice strikes right there when he's on the stand-up. Got a couple of nice licks on Johnny Munoz. Shook him a couple times there. And then Munoz taking things back to the ground, just locking him down, not letting him do anything. Yeah, but on top of that, he was landing some, some ground strikes with his wizard earlier in the fight. He changed that part up. They said, hey, Make sure you strike. Right, got to right. pick it up, got to do more. Yeah. Keep that action flowing. Ladies and gentlemen, before we go to the scorecards, a hand for these two warriors. They left everything inside the cage this evening. This is what championship MMA is all about. Judge at cage side, Chris Crail scores this bout. 50 to 45. Mark Davidson, 48 to 47. And finally, Jackie Denkin, 49 to 46. For your winner by unanimous decision, still undefeated and new King of the Cage, flyweight champion of the world, Johnny K. Crumble Munoz. Junior! Ladies and gentlemen from Toyota Arena, Ontario, California, King of the Cage and General Tire present this three round bout in the welterweight division. After the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, James Beers. Introducing first. Fighting out of our Lucas Oil blue corner, standing 5 feet 9 inches tall, 
official weight, 171.6 pounds. He represents Rounders MMA and Boxing. Ladies and gentlemen, from Santa Ana, California, presenting Richie Palomino. His opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire, red corner, stands at 5 feet 10 inches tall. Official weight, 163 pounds. He represents Cobra Kai. Ladies and gentlemen, from Lucerne Valley, California, presenting Aaron Anza Williams. Once again, James Beers is your official for this bout now with the final instructions. Three rounds, welterweights. Here we are, round number one. Richie Palomino versus Aaron Williams. And we'll get things started. Palomino in the red tape gloves, Williams in the red. And it looks like an early groin shot. Gonna take a break here for a second, give him a little bit of recovery time. Yeah, that, I mean, that was, was too bad, though. I mean, it looked like he hit the lead and slid up a little bit. Yeah. Fortunately, so, accidents happen. Great thing. It's just right now, what, the first 10 seconds? Yeah. So it's Better like, now okay, than we get tired and beat up. <laughs> <laughs> and then blame that for the loss. Right. So, yeah, no, it's... Yeah, so I'm still waiting to see that one guy that takes the full five minutes. Because if you're taking five minutes, it means, you, you know, you got hurt. And normally you're calling the fight off, like, hey, I can't go on no more. Yeah. You know, it's, it's too much pain. Yeah, the pain starts passing into the stomach. Uh, <laughs> gets to be a little unbearable sometimes, but we're right back into it. Both these fighters to experience King of the Cage re regulars. We've seen them both fight here plenty of times before. Williams going for that takedown, trying to work from the ground. Yeah, both these fighters got great count, got are pretty well rounded. Honestly, uh, both of them got really good ground game, pretty strong stand up. It could honestly go either way here. Palomino doing a good job throwing those elbows down, keeping those legs high. Oh, he's doing a good job with that, you know, keeping them high, stopping you know Palomino from doing anything. I'm seeing Reen Williams. <laughs> Williams just continuing to lay down the heat. Both fighters just defending. Palomino not really giving him any kind of leeway room, not letting him progress. Williams just trying to break through that guard. I say, you know, Palomino's doing a good job right here. He's stopping Williams from doing any damage, really, but he's wasting, you know, making Williams waste a lot of energy from above. This is one of those instances where from the bottom, hey, He's not wasting too much energy he's being conservative, but you know, Williams on top doing everything, so when they get out of this, Williams is, is going to be when it's all exhausted right here. But that's it. They get out. <laughs> exactly. Williams continuing to press forward, keeping that pressure. Palomino maintain, maintaining no problem. Now Palomino going for the legs. That was a quick reaction. You know what, and I was just, uh, you know, Williams not seeing what Palomino's doing and just pretty much gave it to him. 
He's yeah, gave up. It was a split. So it may have only been a split half second, but that's all he needed. He was yeah. waiting for that opportunity. When it comes, especially in a sport like fighting, it really comes down to just those milliseconds and those half second opportunities to take. Yep. That is the difference between a knockout, a submission. Everything can change in just a matter of really, honestly, a couple seconds. position here. Look at that, Eugene is way to throw him over. Look at that, Palomino. Locking down that arm with the legs. Getting in some very interesting uh, positions here. And now Williams trying to take the back here, locking in those hooks. I mean, he's, Williams doing a great job right here. Keeping the pressure on, keeping the movement. I mean, he's on him. No matter what position he gets, and he, he fights to get out of it and get back to you know his dominant position. And Williams is one of those fighters who's got a lot of energy to spend. He's got great stamina, great endurance. So he's gonna keep on going, you know, 110% the whole fight. Palomino now struggling to defend a little bit here. Yeah, that's what you gotta make sure, you know, Williams doing a good job continuing the strikes. You know, he, he went for the rear naked, but it wasn't going, so hey, you just start hitting him, you start hitting him. Just under 30 seconds left. Palomino holding on. Aaron Williams just relentless all the way to the very end, just kept pushing the pace. And that's it for round number one. Very energetic performance for both of these fighters. Aaron Williams pushing the pace as much as he can. I mean, he didn't seem to stop for one second that whole round. Palomino was basically forced to be on the defense for a good portion of that round. Um, he did switch it up a little bit there, was able to get a couple takedowns, was able to work from the top, but not for long before Williams was able to twist things around. Yeah, no, no, Williams was a non-stop, you know, I mean, which is great for Williams, you know. He just positioned from one position to another, just trying to get the advantage the whole way through. And, I mean, it, it worked for him. Yeah, and right there, you know, just getting into some very unique and tricky positions. They had a little bit of a stalemate there going for a little while where none of them were really dominating you know, the position. They were just kind of figuring things out. But uh, yeah, locked in that figure four. We'll have to see how it develops coming up after the break, round number two. Here we are, round number two. It's Richie Palomino versus Aaron Williams. Very energetic first round, lots of grappling. We'll see how Palomino reacts now. Williams goes in for a Superman punch there, eats one. Palomino pressuring Williams up against the cage. Looking for that single leg. Gets the takedown. And we'll see if he can do something with it. Yeah, yeah. If, he, if he can keep uh, you know, Williams down the ground right here, deliver some shots. That worked all in his favor right there, especially with that weight right there. You know, just keep the weight down on him. Don't let him get up. Ooh, made him pay, though. Hey, that was great. You know, punch, punch that dead knee. Yeah, make sure you get something out of it. All that hard work. You know, a takedown sometimes takes a lot of energy. Right. And you got to make sure, hey, you know what? I got what I needed out of it. Exactly. It's all about investment. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Williams now just pressuring forward, putting as much as he can. Trying to break past Palomino's guard. I say, you know, Palomino doing a good job here. You know, stop. Williams are doing a lot of damage to him, you know. Williams trying to drop elbows on him and punch and stuff, and he just grabbed his arms and said, no, 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 we can't have that. And right here, now, you know, I'll try and take Williams down. Palomino just barely missing that knee. And Williams going in for a takedown. Palomino not letting it happen. He's a little sloppy on the startup. Palomino now looking to dish some damage out. That could be all that energy he was wasting in the first round and part of this round right here. You know, and, and while Palomino was just sitting there wasting, you know, not wasting no energy, waiting, 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 biting his time. But as soon as he got that opportunity to open up, we know he's quick to the chance, so he was going to oh, take yeah. that nowhere, regardless. And right there, I mean, he's doing a good job keeping his weight on him, keeping him down, throwing shots in there, trying to get, you know, like to soften him up. Williams with a nice kick. Palomino returns. Palomino closing in. Williams looking a little shaky. Now Palomino fights his takedown on. He gets on top right here. I mean, it could, it could change a lot. You see Williams is bringing a lot heavier. And he's trying to keep it, he's trying to keep it going. Oh, you get those punches in there, and now that's what it all comes down to. You know, hey, can I land some good punches that, that damage him, that slow him down? You know, so I can keep doing what I'm doing. Right. Palomino cranking the arm and a nice oh. twist out from Williams. There it is. Oh, and that's there it. There it is. It was quick. And that's all it takes. Richie Palomino takes that win. Let's take a look at that replay really quick. Palomino coming off of a fantastic win right there. Again, like I was saying, this is going to be a great test for both these fighters. Both Aaron Williams and Richie Palomino have been fighting here for quite some time and both proved their strength in the cage. Palomino is able to take this win here tonight. Uh, Williams was definitely pushing the pace for a while, but I think he started suffering from a little bit of fatigue, and uh, Palomino was able to capitalize on that. He had a nice twist out of that arm lock right there, but Palomino was able to adapt, change his position, change his style, and was able to take him out. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time, three minutes and 57 seconds of round number one. Your winner by tap out submission from a Camorra, Evando La Bandera Mexicana, Richie Palomino. from Toyota Arena, Ontario, California. King of the Cage and General Tire present our co-featured belt of the evening. Sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission, Commissioner John Carvelli, Chair, Executive Officer Andy Foster, Event Representative and Supervisor at Cageside, Sean Wells. It's in conjunction with Committee Cage Incorporated. President and founder, Terry Trebilcock Jr. Matchmaker Carlos Rivera, promoter Jeff Mahalik. The three judges scoring this match will be Chris Quayle, Mark Davidson, and Jackie Denkin. After the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Mylon Air.
And now, Southern California, put your hands together for our co-feature of the evening, three rounds of MMA in the Bantamweight Division. Introducing first, fighting out of our Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing five feet six inches tall, official weight 145 pounds. This adrenaline FC fighter has a professional record of three victories with no defeats and one draw. Ladies and gentlemen, from San Bernardino, California, presenting Anthony Tash Jimenez. Here's the corner across the cage, fighting out of our general tire red corner, stands at five feet seven inches tall. Official weight, an even 146 pounds. This cage combat academy fighter has a professional record of two victories with one defeat. Ladies and gentlemen, from Victorville, California, presenting Albert Mello. Round number one. Once again, everybody, we are here at King of the Cage, Golden Era, at the Toyota Arena, Ontario, California. This is our main event of the night. Anthony Jimenez versus Albert Veloz. 145-pound division, three rounds, five minutes apiece. Both these fighters are very even opponents for each other. We've seen them fight countless times before here at King of the Cage. Honestly, I, I, looking into this matchup from the very beginning, I thought this was going to be a very strong matchup. Both these fighters, this will be a great test for both of their skill because they're both similar types of fighters. They both have basically pretty, pretty similar records, uh, pretty similar fight styles. I think it'll be really good for them to push each other. Oh, yeah, and that's what you want in a fight. You want two guys that are, are pretty much evenly matched, so that way you can just see, hey, you know what, how, how good are, are the, each one's skills? You know, who can prevail with you got someone that matches you equally for, for everything? Exactly, it really makes an athlete push themselves further. And both of them starting out pretty even so far. Some mild aggression getting dished out back and forth. Veloz with a nice body kick. Jimenez moving in with a couple of strikes there. Below's trying to counter. You know what I like when these guys come in with their strikes? They come in with two, three, three, and four shots. Right, and yeah. they're swinging hard with it. You know, they're, they're, they're mixing it up a little bit. They're throwing hooks, they're throwing uppercuts, they're throwing jabs. Below's now trying to take things down to the ground. Lowe's, again, grabbing the legs, taking things down to the ground, keeping it there. Jimenez trying to get back up to his feet. Well, Jimenez is making it, but I think Veloz earned that takedown all the way. You know, he ain't making it easy at yeah. all. He's like, you're going to get me down, you're going to get me all the way down. Yeah, because, I mean, you know, he took him down, and he go right back up on our feet. So it ain't, it ain't just a give me. You know, we got Jimenez trying to get that takedown. You see that difference right here, you know. Veloz, he threw a few elbows, you know, while, while Jimenez trying to take him down, you know, distract him a little bit, where Jimenez was just fighting the takedown the whole way through. It changes, it changes the whole outcome when you throw punches into, into the uh, takedown defense. And just back to what I was saying, I mean, both, about both these guys being very similar fighters, you can see in just the technique, you know, as soon as one tries to go for that single leg, it doesn't work out, other one slips out, goes straight for the single leg again. Uh, both of them are kind of just switching off back and forth. Below's now on top, taking the back. You see right there, that, that, that pat, grounded pat right there, that's what makes the difference right there. Throw the shots, maybe get a submission out of it. Below's trying to lock something in, but I don't think it quite has it. Jimenez keeping that chin. Right in the right place. Good job. 
And she was doing a good job. Like I said, he throws some punches in there, tries to soften him up, changes, you know, he manages his viewpoint of things so he can try and get a, a submission in there. A person just going for a submission, going for a submission instead of, you know, setting it up. And that way, you always got to set everything up. You know, every now and then, you, you get lucky with, you know, say, a right. naked or an arm bar. You might just find an opportunity at yeah. the right moment. But for the most part, every you're going to want, yeah, that clear technique. You want to be able to get it every single time. <laughs> The lows once again trying to set in this rear naked choke. He's got his hooks in. He's got to be careful with the hook there because if Jimenez, you know, knows much, he can just grab his his uh, ankle with his leg and oh, spin him right there. That's true. You know, which to me is the weirdest thing. As a how you how you submit somebody like that, but yet, you know, yeah. Yeah, if you think about how the body is like right there, that's a very <laughs> uncomfortable uh, bend. Yeah. <laughs> It is. It's just, oh, my God. The, the submissions that are out there are, are, are tricky, and then you know a lot of them. And it's so, they're so simple. It's like you don't think, like, oh, yeah, I can switch from here, I can switch from there. Right, especially in this position, one of the most annoying positions to be in, you know, from him and his perspective. It's like you're just worried about, okay, I'm trying not to get choked out, trying yeah. not to get hit in the face over and over again. And that's it for round number one. Anthony Jimenez versus Albert Veloz. They had a pretty energetic first round. Veloz taking that slight advantage. Jimenez looks like he's much more the aggressor this round. He's looking to deal some damage back. Yeah, as Corner probably told him, hey, that was not a good round. You know, it didn't go our way. Pick it up. Is it? <laughs> Veloz defending. Jimenez looking much more energetic this round, coming out with a lot more explosiveness. I bet he's doing a good job. You get pressure on you. Know, he is delivering shots too from this position. He's not just sitting there. Well, that was a good job right there on that reversal. You know, a little slip by Jimenez. He took advantage. Jimenez getting the turnaround, now working with the lows up against the fence. Dropping down for that takedown once again. The lows make take control of that arm. You know what, though, I, the only thing I see is the lows, his mouth is open a lot. He, he breathes he breathe really heavy. So I don't know if, uh, uh, you know, on a break time, you know, his partner say, hey, look, look at your opponent. He's tired. He's done. You know, push him this round and we can end it. But he's got to be careful, too. He can't put himself in a position where, you know, he's going to get in a submission or, or, or get one out himself. He's got to make sure when he gets, you know, gets up that he takes advantage of that, whether it's a takedown, you know, gets his back, whatever it is, he's got to take advantage to the fullest. Jimenez brings things down to the ground. Below still locking onto that neck. Jimenez looking for whichever way he can work this into there. Now knee in the knees. Okay, he's doing a good job keeping the pressure on Veloz, but I say he's got to be careful with stuff like that. You know, he gets right. crazy, careless, just take him down. And doesn't look at where the position they're landing. And then you got Veloz getting right. on your back. Especially a fighter like Veloz, he's got very quick reaction time. You know, this guy's always, and he, you know, like I said, these guys are pretty evenly matched on the ground. So any move that Jimenez can pull off, you know, Veloz is pulling off just as well. Uh -huh. And he's looking for those tiny little moments, those tiny little slip-ups to take advantage of. I, have to, I, I see Jimenez has a little more juice, a little more energy, more power than, than Veloz because, I mean, he is. Veloz is huffing and puffing, but Veloz still got enough to get up. When he sees the opportunity, like I said, the reaction time is there. Exactly, to right. To try and take advantage of the position. It's like a slight speed, agility advantage to Veloz with that, you know, going against that slight power advantage that you have on 
and energy from Jimenez it just makes it a really interesting fight. Yeah. I mean, both these guys just going right back and forth immediately. It's just one takedown after another, and it's kind of switched off one by one. And I got to give credit to the right here. You know, every time he gets taken down, and Jimenez tries to get some shots in on it, he stands right back up. And makes it makes him and his work for that takedown again. But I mean, this I, I would say is not looking good for Veloz if they go into the third round, right? Because like I say he's, he's he's taking a lot of energy, you know, wasting a lot of energy right here. I mean, he managed wasting a lot of energy on these takedowns, trying to keep him down, but exactly. it's just a. Hey, does he have the same energy for going in the third round? You're right. You know, we got a whole another five minutes coming up after this yeah. if somebody doesn't finish right now. So that's really going to be the game changer. Just under 33 seconds left in this round. Jimenez still pumping hard. Uh, the key factor to me right here is the punishment you get on your opponent. That's going to give him wear and tear that he can't recover from. And, you know, as long as he keeps that up, pressure on that stomach, man. Get, get all that air out of there, those lungs, man. Just boom, make him breathe hard. And Jimenez finishing strong. That's the end of round number two. We're going to take a look at a replay real quick. And honestly, at this point, the fight could go either way. Had to give that first round to Velos, but after seeing Jimenez bounce back this round, got to go to him now, too. It yeah, really could yeah. go either way. It's 50-50, depending on how they come out of this third round. And I mean, right now, looking at him, both guys, I'm saying Jimenez is going to come out a little more stronger in this last yeah. round because the corner's going to say, hey, he's done. Right. It's all you right he, here, right yes. now. Jimenez is one of those fighters where, like, the more he gets beat up or the more they're going on, he kind of tends to get more energy as the fight like, comes uh -huh. to a close. He gets more pumped. He's trying to finish. He's, you know, determined to try to get something done. Oh, and it always helps when you see your opponent gasp for yeah, like, oh, visibly I'm, I'm tired. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, oh, wait, he's tired? Okay, you know what? I got a little more energy. You know what? Let's do this. Confidence booster. Oh, yeah. Look at him. He's bouncing around. He's ready. He ain't touching no gloves. We're going at it. Oh, yeah. Jimenez bringing all the energy to tell you. See Veloz, he's breathing heavy, he's got his mouth open. Yeah, you can see it right here in the movement, you know. Jimenez, he's moving, he's ready. Veloz is just like, okay, you know, I got, just got to get you in. You got to go here. Jimenez look at that, look at that, look at that. still got that power we were talking about. Able to pick him up, not only pick him up, but walk him a few steps. Oh, yeah. See, he's got to be careful. He jumped for that rear naked. And he didn't have his hooks in, didn't have nothing, and he could have lost position. Luckily, Veloz is fatigued right now, so he's <laughs> able to be at that reaction time is significantly slowed. Yeah, because remember I said he, he's quick to react on, on you know, positions and stuff like that. But here's a good job. He's got both his hooks in, all his weight down on him. Exactly. All he can do is protect that head. And that's, that's what it's all about. You know, wear him out more. Wear him out more. That's the whole key right there. Jimenez got back on top right away. That's the key, you know. Key you stay on top of, keep heavy. Close That's a lot of energy up. right there. A lot of energy from every Marvel little off. lift, every attempt. Even if you, yep. if you don't land it, that's just lost energy. Uh, yep. <laughs> that means you got to do it again, try it again, and yep. oh man. I gotta say, Jimenez kept up that same intensity. You know, he's got him there. He's keeping the pressure on him. He's not letting him up. You know, he's making him pay. So. Below's trying to use that last, you know, scrounging up that last bit of energy to do whatever he can. He's conserving it for the short little burst where it's needed. But Jimenez, I think those, his energy is just off the charts right now. It's crazy. It he's looking it more is. pumped now than he did the first one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That first round might have been just a warm-up round. Because right now, I mean, it, it's, it's all he matters right here. It's just that 
complex diversity between you know one and one fighter. You can have two fighters that have the same style, same weight, same height, similar records, but still have them fight completely differently when it comes down to these. You know, really brings out that character of what kind of fighter you are in the third round. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, I mean, the first round, it, it was both fighters, but Volos had a, you know, a bit of the advantage. Right. After that, I mean, his energy went down, yep. and that's what the whole difference was. Jimenez is just fueling off of that. He sees it. It's visible. I'm sure it's just pumping him up even more. Yeah. He's yeah. still got lots of time, two, uh, just over two minutes. Yeah. If Volos had that same energy, I mean, it'd be a different fight, but, yeah, I mean, he got taken out of him. Jimenez just continuing to pursue. It's that determination. Looking for another takedown. I'm pretty sure he's going to get it. There it is. <laughs> I mean, he, every single one he's attempted, he's got it. Yeah. You know, that, that just goes to show you the fatigueness of Veloz. Seriously, yeah. I mean, he's still, Veloz, like I said, he's not, he, you can't say he's done mm -hmm. because he still gets back up to his feet. He's still defending himself. He's still in the fight. But, I mean, he is just, he can't do enough to, to turn the tide right here. No, exactly. And, you know, I think it's nothing against Veloz, but I think just think part of that is, uh, you know, Veloz was, a, was an amateur for a little longer than Jimenez was. Jimenez transferred over to the pros a little earlier than Veloz did, so he had a little bit more time and experience with these five-minute rounds, with these longer fights. He may just be much, you know, better prepared for it by experience. Uh, that, that could be very true. You know, it's, it's, it, is, it is tough from amateurs to pros. You know, just even, 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 you know, time-wise, but uh, the strikes, you know, you got right. elbows. It's different, you yeah. Know, yeah. You got more damage being dealt, you got longer times. Uh-huh. Whole new game. Just under 45 seconds here left. I think Veloz, I mean, not Veloz, uh, Jimenez still maintaining that lead uh, for this round so far. He's been basically dominating the pace, getting all those takedowns, like you said. It's going to be really tough for Veloz to turn things around at this point. He's running out of time. Yeah, and I mean, right there, those punches. Nice little flurries right there. Always add more and more for the judges to see. Even though, I mean, like I said, looking at this right now, I can see hands down, Velos just dominated him, you know, took him down at will. You know, I mean, not Velos, uh, Jimenez. He dominated Velos. Velos got up, but he would take, Jimenez would take him right back down, deliver some shots. You know, you see these punches, everything just keeps coming at him. And that's it for this bout. Three long rounds all the way to the finish. It's going to have to be up to the judges' scorecard as to who wins this bout. Um, but like we said before, you know, too, I think it was a great fight for both these fighters. They were able to learn a lot and really experience a lot from this. Um, definitely one of the tougher opponents that Jimenez has gone up against. Definitely one of the toughest opponents Veloz has ever gone up against. Um, yeah, I think they both were able to test each other, and Jimenez learned a little bit about, you know, all right, test that out in that first round next to him. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. I mean, like I said, it was. I was. I was. I was expecting the rounds to be closer. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of bantamweight action here in California's Inland Empire, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge at page side, Chris Crail, scores this contest. 29 to 27, while judges Mark Davidson and Jackie Denkin both score it 29 to 28. All three in favor of your winner by unanimous decision, Anthony Josh Jimenez.